Welcome to ET Edge Insights interview series. Today we have with us Mr. Deepak NG. He is the managing director of Deso Systems. Deepak, thank you for taking the time out and speaking to ET Edge Insights. Hey, it's pleasure, uh, Tanmay. It's my pleasure. Let me begin by asking you: uh, When we are talking about virtual twins with regards to sustainability, what are the key benefits that you can assess and let us know about it? Uh, to start with, I just want to highlight the difference between digital twin and then virtual twin. Right. So that gives a right context on the benefits and advantages of virtual twin. Right. So when we talk about digital twin, it is focused on a specific product or to an extent like you know, a component and a whole product, how you can simulate and see its behavior. But when we talk about virtual twin, it actually not only takes care of that product, but the entire processes, right. how the product is made, the associated element in, in terms of how the market intelligence is actually embedded to that, how the downstream manufacturing is actually looking at and how customer experience can be visualized. So the whole context can be actually visualized in a sophisticated experience is called uh, virtual twin. Right. Now to answer your uh, questions on the benefits, so benefits I want to kind of highlight in uh, maybe at a very high level in three, how it addresses three sectors. So if I have to talk about manufacturing sector, so look at in manufacturing sector, uh, there are new innovative products which are coming. I mean, if I have to talk about within manufacturing sector, uh, transportation, mobility and automotive. Now the cars are going to be electric, the hydrogens are coming in. Then when it comes to infrastructure, uh, the building, the building management system, new ways of like, you know, uh, assessing the building performance or rather uh, leveraging the uh, energy consumption. Then when it comes to healthcare, how virtual twin of a human body can actually help to design better medical equipment and also personalized patient care. So these are some things which are very, very, very crucial when it comes to leveraging the virtual twin technology. How does it actually align to the sustainability fact? Now, if you look at days where if a consumer want to buy a product, earlier days they were actually looking at, I need a robust product, which is strong. Then continued saying that while you're giving, I also want an economical product. Like, you know, if I buy a car, I also need to monitor the mileage. I also need to see how does it actually behaves for a longer period. Then the thing came, I need experience. You know, I need a flashy, stylish car and I need experience. Now, if you look at across all industries, Customers are looking at a purpose. Why am I buying this? What am I going to contribute to the society by doing this? Like, you know, then comes the sustainability element. So now you can't just simply jump into sustainability and say, okay, I'm going to create a nice product which is going to be a sustainable, which can be reusable, which can, which is used by a reused component, but forget all the past. It's not going to happen, right? Okay. Now, how do you maintain that and then consider all aspects so that you give a better experience with the purpose for the consumers? This virtual twin technology is going to help. So while you're building, you'll get an opportunity to see, validate and assess and analyze. Are you using right material? Is it used with a re reusable methodology? Am I leaving less carbon footprint while reducing prototype? Everything can be assessed. That's where the virtual twin is going to contribute to the sustainability element. Well, so uh, we see there are numerous benefits. While there are benefits, we've always seen that uh, implementing something and in case of virtual twins, there are certain challenges as well. So do you think there are a few challenges while implementing virtual twin for sustainability and if so how does uh, one overcome that okay so now the things are very clear every single organization today is looking at how they can contribute to this okay. how can they contribute to environment and they have set their goals right so whether their esg goals everything they are very clearly set now comes challenges and uh, having said that there is no easy ways, right? right? There are many, but where are, there are certain things like, you know, which is very crucial and which most of the companies are looking at fixing that is first the change management, right. the way we think, the way we actually kind of like, you know, start producing. There are conventional ways, which is which was there for years and which is actually robust and running fine. Right. But am I willing to unlearn and do something different Then innovation? So now it's not only the product innovation, the innovation starts at every stage. Today, uh, the moment when we say, hey, what an innovative product, but there are innovative ways to manufacture. Yeah. There are innovative ways to sell the product. 
innovative ways to actually even give customer experience. So, these are the changes which has to be brought in by many other departments because there are okay. certain team where they were thinking, I am for this particular role, I may not be contributing the sustainability, the answer is no. So, everybody is contributing. Now, that is where you need to stitch. One, the change management. The second thing on the integrations because when you talk about sustainability, you need a common platform where you can visualize what you are actually performing. You have a 3D data, you have a process flow of your manufacturing and you know the customer information coming in. So, when you do that, it is equally important to integrate multiple systems. Yeah. So, now yes, there may be some legacy systems, there may be systems which is running fine, there are some adjustments has to be done, you have to come out of your comfort zone. So, this is one. And very, very important aspect for any product you take, I mean I am just talking about manufacturing per se or uh, uh, transportation mobility, whether it is a car or plane. A OEM is very well focused on, I am focusing on sustainability, so my products are designed in such that I take care of this entire sustainability element. But there are many elements and components where they are dependent on their suppliers. Are the suppliers really at the same maturity level of what as a OEM thinking in terms of sustainability is what the key question and now how we can actually work towards the and work towards entire value network thinking in that direction so that any component fits into my end product is also taking care of the sustainability aspect. This is where we are like you know working towards providing a platform the same by which the OEMs can interact with suppliers and suppliers can actually measure and then they try to innovate new ways to cater to the sustainability aspect and then bring in. So, these are the challenges but the positive part is there are ways to mitigate that right. and this is where we are actually pitching it. Right. It is a very you know insightful thing you have said that ultimately it is all the stakeholders that is exactly. required to be involved in order to ensure that you know this is done seamlessly. When we talk about virtual twins, if it is integrated with say AI, how does that uh, benefit or is there you know a way it enhances uh, sustainability? Okay. So, today uh, AI has become the future, right? right? I mean, of course, you are going beyond generative AI, AI was there. Uh, it is it's, it's a collection of good data. Right. So, uh, you have the data. Now, what happens, you know, uh, again, if I have to give a simple example, in the entire value chain of any organization, there are multiple departments. So, there may be a design engineering department, simulation department, you have a customer facing department or marketing department. So, they have data. Right. They have data and then they may do kind of like you know assessment on what is good from the past and what they have to do future. So, now just imagine for a decision maker integrating the data or taking that data and putting that in a single platform in the context of virtual twin can actually help him to visualize the entire flow. Like for example, some may say, hey, based on my survey, customers are saying that I need a component or I need a mechanism where I can easily open my door of a car. That is a intelligence and that the data has been collected. Now, he does and he gives the feedback and engineering will do everything. They do a fantastic door which can be easily opened. But you realize that it is not even easy to manufacture. It is not even easy to procure the material what they want. It is not easy to assemble. So, just imagine these data whatever you have put together the AI piece and then integrate with virtual twin yeah. which we are doing. We are doing it at different interval whether it is at a marketing or simulation. Then you can see the end result coming in. Oh, if I change this, it is not only helping my need but end of the day my supplier also will be able to give the right product. How does uh, virtual twin help in the designing and implementation of smart buildings for example, if you can just elaborate on that very interesting topic because that is where you can actually have lot of areas on the sustainability even if you take your own homes and your own offices right. You are so focused on every single aspect on what am I doing, what am I doing for the society, am I thinking of reuse, am I actually saying no to certain materials which is not good or which is not sustainable. So, this is everywhere. Now, what virtual twin can do help you to simulate this aspect at a very early stage. I mean you talked about building, let me highlight on the building, but it can be at any level actually, it can be at a city level for that matter, not only building. 
So if I have to take a building, uh, now what's important in a building? The type of material what they use. Yes, there are areas where they have to kind of come out with new materials. So simulate and see whether this is actually, a, which can actually do the same or it has the same purpose of what it used to be earlier. Then comes, how do I consume, how do I like, you know, generate energy? So if I have to put, for example, I have five buildings in a society. If I put solar panels on top of the buildings, what kind of energy it can generate and what energy it can actually fulfill. Yeah. So this simulation, similarly, water resource management. Similarly, uh, your cooling, heating, like, you know, data centers. Now, how do you measure? The sustainability is very, very important there, right? It generates, emits heat. So how can I actually simulate and see, do a better design? So this is where the virtual twin technology to simulate before even you design, before even you start doing your proto can actually help. And there are certain very, very good example. I mean, this all lead to simple way of cost savings also. Yeah. So just imagine there are multiple iterations, like, you know, I mean, a layout I have to put, there are five, six buildings and these five, six buildings can be put in five different directions, five different ideas. One can be 30 floor, first option can be 20 floor, third option can be 50 floors. So all these things take time, take energy, you may kind of design, but you may miss out some points. Yeah. Just imagine you have everything in, you change instantly, and then see the behavior and outcome where you have measuring KPIs also. Right. If I do this, what kind of CO2 emission I'm saving? What kind of uh, impact I'm actually doing it? So these are the elements which can be done using virtual when, when it comes to infrastructure. Deepak, you just talked about data, the importance of data. So what role does uh, data analytics play when we talk about opportunities for sustainability with regards to virtual trains? Oh, it's, it's plenty. It's plenty. Uh, the reason because as I said earlier, every stage in your value chain, there are needs to kind of think of how I can actually contribute by making some minor changes in the sustainability part. If I have to give a simple example, it goes back to like, you know, where I explained about from a robust and uh, very economical vehicle to the purpose, right? So that means like the, the research and development has happened from many, many, many years, right? So you have plenty of data with you. If I have to talk about a car, the car itself has so many components which are done, manufactured and you know everything and it is always there. Now, the data analytics, the data can actually help for even your future design. So if I'm manufacturing a new car, I have an opportunity to crawl across all my data sets and see, hey, this, this car also requires some amount of similar components. I don't have to waste my time in right doing again, right? So it has actually given an opportunity to leverage an old part or a component which was already done, maybe like, you know, in earlier model and which is similar to your current design. Now, the question comes is, using that, that's a data you have, that data now through your virtual twin technology, how can you actually visualize and see whether that particular component makes sense. Yes, it makes sense because of its physical appearance. But does it make sense with respect to the material what was used right. then? So you change the material and simulate and see. And you see which all suppliers have involved in developing that component. Now you have a ready list. So you can reach out to these suppliers immediately so that your entire sourcing cycle will be less. Right. So they immediately react, they take, pick that old data, they rework on that and your component is ready. So in the whole cycle, what you are doing is your simulating your new components by leveraging some of the data what already you had and also improvising on that to meet your sustainability parameters and then saving costs and reducing your prototypes. Yeah. Just imagine if I have to build new, I'll build like, you know, three or four prototypes that itself is cost, that itself is you're leaving lot of components on the yeah. ground. Yeah. So how can I reduce that? Even one prototype saved is nothing but you're contributing to your sustainability. Yeah. This is what actually a data can do wow. when it comes to right. this one. On that note, Deepak, thank you very much for these wonderful insights. I wish you all the best yeah. for your ventures and your future projects. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.